Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. I got a haircut. Feels good to be alive. Uh, and I'm here once again to talk about a bunch of cool stuff that I'm working on. So uh, we're going to get right into it today. We've got lots to lots to do. But <clears throat> the, uh, the key to all of this, the stuff that I've been working on uh, a lot of this week, and uh, it was inspired a lot by some stuff that I did last week, um, is rethinking my entire approach to writing JavaScript uh, for Alexa skills. And this has inspired a, a couple of things. Um, the first is I'm building this skill called Alexa Dev Tips. And I thought, well, let me, let me reinvent that because I haven't gotten too deep into building it yet, so it wouldn't be as hard to refactor compared to like the, the scavenger hunt or uh, the Star Wars database or any of those would have a lot more complex, a lot more complex interactions. So I started there and uh, I finished it yesterday. So I've, I've refactored this in a way that I think I like. I have some things that I need to figure out. Um, there's, there's a little bit of magic to the, the ask SDK, uh, specifically regarding like session variables, but we'll get into all that stuff. But I'm, um, I'm really happy with kind of where this has gone and where I've ended up. Uh, and I have some more, I have much more to learn. This was, this was based on about two hours of interaction with a friend of mine uh, and him showing me a few tips and tricks that he uses when he writes Node. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we're doing today. Um, also, for those of you that are here regularly, like Gold Zulu and um, Oxygen Box and a few of you others, uh, which, by the way, I, I didn't think that you were saying the music's bad, but um, I was I was actually joking that it like gets me fired up. But I uh, the I this I need a new song. I need like I need it to be randomized. I want to be able to play playlists, but I'm really conscientious about things like copyright and stuff like that, right? So I don't want to be playing any copyrighted music, uh, and finding non-copyrighted music could be challenging. I found this interesting player called Pretzel. Um, that I use, and um, I, I haven't used it recently. I, I don't really know why I haven't used it recently. I think I, the problem is, is a lot of this stuff only works um, while you're streaming, and so I haven't, I haven't done a good job of like setting up some test streams and giving this stuff a run. But at some point, I will get back to worrying about background music and sound effects and chatbots and all that other stuff. But what I really wanted to do today today specifically is kind of walk you guys through this new architecture that I'm putting together. And then one of the other things that I thought I could do is um, build out, hopefully, this is something I haven't done before, and there's very limited documentation. Um, but I'm hoping that I can pull this off. But what I want to be able to do is basically build a skill template, a, a, a basis by which um, I will start every single time uh, that I build a new Alexa skill, and it will have all the parts and pieces that I really want already in place. So I think that refactoring this dev tip skill has given me the ability to do a lot of that, and now it's just a matter of um, ripping out even more, because uh, I, I have things in there like changing uh, Alexa's voice to one of the poly voices. That's not really a default feature that I need. Um, I also have... Uh, playing speech cons, something that else that we've already built into the dev tip skill. So those things I'll want to take out also. Um, so let's just get into it. The first thing I really want to do is uh, just show this new structure, this new code that I'm working with uh, and kind of what it looks like. So I'm going to close some things down here. All right. So let me blow that up a little bit for you. Okay. So you can see here, let me get the terminal out of the way for right now. We'll talk about what's going on in the terminal in a bit. Um, but this is my index file. So it probably looks vaguely familiar. Trade Last is here. Good morning, Trade Last. You and Gold Zulu in my display have the exact same color, and your names are pretty much the same length. So I didn't notice that uh, you snuck in there. But good morning, Trade Last. Um, so this is the thing uh, that I'm doing for the most part. I've created a new file um, in a new folder called Handler um, that actually handles all of the, the code for all of my handlers. And so as you look at this, you can see this is still my launch request handler right here. And I do the, is the request type a launch request? That's great. But then instead of all of my code living here, 
what I'm doing instead is making a call out to a new file called launch request. And so if I look in my uh, handler folder, I have one called launch request. And in here, um, you can see that this is the normal code that I would have in there, right? I have a simple console log statement. Um, I have a new, f I've a new set of functions that I've created in a file called helper, and we'll talk about that too. Um, but this is meant to keep track of in a session variable um, what I tried to do, what the user was trying to do this turn. And we've talked a little bit about this, but I'll show you how the the repeat intent and how a couple of other things that I've built into this really make a, a difference in how my user can interact with my skill just by doing this one thing. So this is a this is a function called set action. We'll talk. Well, let's talk about it now. So I have this helper file, um, and in here somewhere, I have set action. And so you can see, um, I have not. Well, yes, technically all of this. Uh, that's a good question. Technically, all of this lives on my GitHub, um, but it's part of the uh, Alexa Dev Tips repository right now. I'm actually going to be building out a separate repository that is um, a new one that will be Alexa Skill Template, that will be the, the actual starter kit. I haven't put that together yet. So my goal is hopefully by the end of this two hours, we will have created that template completely and... Um, push all of this content out to GitHub so it's there. But if you want to see anything that I'm working on right now, um, all of that is here in this Alexa Dev Tips repository. You can see that if I go to my Lambda folder, uh, the handler folders here, Airtable, Test, and we'll get into what all these things are. But if you, want to, if you want to see this repository, if you want to dig into it, I know you guys like to borrow code, uh, which I'm totally fine with. I'll just drop that here so you can see what that is. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk about set action. So what I'm doing here is I'm just getting a reference to set session attributes. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I was being polite, Gold Zulu, but we'll call it stealing. That's fine. But so my hope is that this helper file is something you can just plug into any skill, um, and it'll give you all of the kind of like helper functions that I know Gold Zulu and a few of you others have mentioned that you use, like my get spoken words, get resolve words. Um, this is just one file. You can include it and boom, all you have to do is hand, hand the handler input generally um, and it'll return to you the thing that you want. So I'm trying to make it really simple and easy to use. Uh, these, these are things that ultimately should probably end up in the SDK, um, but they're not there today and I'll have to work with the SDK team to make that stuff happen. So anyway, um, this set action function that I'm calling, all it does is it sets a session attribute called previous action equal to some string. So in the case of this one, you can see, well, uh, let's go to launch request. Not sure why I closed that on me. You can see here that I'm just saying launch request. Uh, 15,000 channel points, my goodness. That's a lot of channel points, Lord of Sound. Uh, congratulations. Um, okay, so you can see here that I'm just saying, hey, save as a session variable, previous action, and I want the previous action to be launch request. This becomes valuable for a couple of reasons. One, um, if the user says help next time, I know what they were doing. So this allows me uh, a very simple, easy way to be able to identify what is it they were doing when they said help, right? Um, so that it, it funnels right into my help thing. I could say, oh, they were trying to do, maybe a launch request isn't a great example, but maybe they were trying to listen to a speech con or they were trying to do, you know, get an answer to a question or something like that. So this basically just stores that data for me so that I can identify what it is they were trying to do. So that's that's one. That's the first thing. The second one, I have a function called get locale. This probably isn't necessary, but I thought it was useful. Um, I don't know why I can't just open all of these files at once, but let's open helper again. Boy, it just doesn't want to open. No, I don't want any of those choices. Why, where's open? exactly what I didn't want to do. Okay, so we'll put this over here. We'll put this over here. It just will not, my goodness, I don't know what's going on, but it will not let me um, open all of those files at once. So anyway, so I have get locale. All it's doing is grabbing the locale of the user right out of um, the handler input. But the thing for me is that then I don't have to remember that syntax. I can just say, uh, if I can go back to my file, I don't know why these won't all individually open. Um, 
if I go back into launch request, you can see here that um, I just pass in the handler input and then it returns the locale to me. So this is a nice way for me to easily grab the locale. And the reason that I need the locale is because of all of the ways that I manage speech in my skills. And so I have these variables, speak output and action query. These are the two pieces of a statement. So I might say, welcome to the skill. That would be the, the welcome, the speak output message because I'm getting it from my welcome table. And then I would have an action query and that's the thing that I tack on the end because I want to continue the conversation. So it might be something like, um, what do you want to do next or whatever, right? We could have a whole slew of those. But by pairing those two, by separating them into collections of, of um, interactions and then pairing them up, I get a unique kind of response every time uh, because it's randomly grabbing one of each. Uh, so that's what uh, those two things are. And then down here, we're doing all the same stuff we were before, but I have one more helper function, which is change voice. And um, I have a speak output and action query paired together. Obviously, that's where that happens. I actually want to I'm working on fixing my syntax, so maybe we'll do this as we're here. I'm going to all backticks. Um, this is something else that uh, I've come to appreciate in my learnings. And so we're gonna we're gonna replace some things with backticks as we go it. And so we'll we'll do our console log, um, and we'll do our launch request. That's fine. Um, and this welcome here, but where it becomes more important is when we start uh, dropping or concatenating strings. Uh, so we can clean that up a little bit. Okay, so that piece is there. And then this is I'm gonna do here and dollar sign and curly brace. Uh, I originally hated this syntax, like, like more than I probably should have. But what I found is that this gives me a much better visualization of what this sentence is gonna look like. Um, Totally, Gold Zulu. This is available. If you click on that link that I posted earlier, um, right there in that directory is helper.js, and all of these functions are there right now. So if you want to grab this file as is right now, uh, feel free. But I'm sure we will add more to it as we go here. Um, they are from Clark School, yeah. Um, so a lot of this is. Um... <laughs> See you later, Gold Zulu. Thanks for tuning in, man. Um, Okay, so that's, uh, that's my little syntax there for concatenating strings. And then I have um, this change voice function. And so this, if you haven't seen this before, if I go into helper, uh, looks like something. I should put these in alphabetical order or something. All I do is I get from their session attributes what the user's poly voice currently is. This is something that um, I'm going to rip out for our template because most people aren't going to build a skill where they, they are allowing the user to swap poly voices on the fly. Um, and as we've we've learned talking with, I think, Lord of Sound and a few others, uh, you're not even really allowed to let the user refer to those things by uh, their actual names. So those are all things that I need to figure out too. But that's what this function does, is it allows you to basically wrap all of your content in a voice tag with whatever the user's poly voice happens to be. I'm trying to not uh, have a lot of this stuff reliant specifically on things that I stored in the session because not everybody will do that, right? Uh, or want to do that, or they'll do it in a different way. And that's uh, that's totally fine and understandable. So, so this is my launch request, right? So if we go back and look at index, this is what my index file looks like now. That's what my launch request handler looks like. And instead, I'm just calling out to that launch request function, and I'm passing my handler input. And it works marvelously. Uh, we do the same thing for pretty much everything else. So for the speech content handler, you can see I have a file, a function called speech content. For the change voice intent handler, I have a change voice intent. Help intent, uh, these are all kind of the same thing. Uh, I have a repeat intent handler. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna rework these a little bit, how I've named these. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know yet. Like this, this repeat intent doesn't map to amazon.repeat intent in my head and I feel like I could make that clearer. So I'm thinking about maybe making a folder that's called Amazon all caps. And then I will have um, repeat intent be the name of the function still. But then when I say return Amazon.repeat intent, it'll look like, um, it'll, it'll look exactly like I, I kind of expect it to do. So that's, um, that's repeat. Um, we'll talk about repeat in a second because that's pretty cool how that works. 
Uh, we have a stop intent handler. Um, we have a session ended. I didn't do anything here. This is nothing. I, I can't respond to the user in this. Um, and so uh, that is that one. Actually, I was just looking at this um, Gold Zulu about hacking the should end session. Um, and it looks like there is a way to do that where you can actually hack it. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, it's, a, it's a function in the, in the SDK, I think, that you can use. So I wasn't looking for it specifically for you, but I was just looking through something yesterday and I was like, oh, oh, I didn't even know that was there. I have intent reflector. And so same thing here, I have intent reflector. And we'll talk about all this code. Um, and then you can see that I also have an error handler um, and all of this stuff gets broken out. Then the stuff that's really left in here is the exports.handler down here at the bottom. This is where a list of all my handlers exist. This is all the same. There's nothing different about this. Um, and then I also have my request log function. This is where I do things like um, write out my request envelope um, and my get response from um, the response builder. So those things happen here, but also this is where I grab my user record. So if I am saving a user record to something like uh, something like Airtable or something like that, this is the code that I use to do that. So uh, this still lives here. I didn't I didn't feel the need to extract this, but you will see that like all of the functionality of get user record is inside a new folder called Airtable called get user record, and this is where we go into like calling with the API key and returning the record, and if, if there is a record, then I return it, and if there isn't, then I create one, and that's what this, uh, this piece here is. This is all the same code for the most part. Um, we're just doing it in a way uh, that's a little more manageable, and the, the thing that it unlocks is what we do here. So if we look at like launch request, these are tests that I can write now. Um, because now I don't have to go through the entire Alexa pipeline. I don't have to go through my index file at all, actually. Uh, what I can do instead is for this launch request set of tests, I can say, is this a launch request? And so I can check the previous action value and say, is it launch request? And if it is, great, passes. I also have a property called is error. And this is something that gets set in my error handler. So if we go look at error.js, um, you can see that I set the session attributes of is error to true every time I hit the error handler so that I can do some interesting things with that, right? I can be able to, I can, at that point, um, run my tests and quickly see whether or not there's an error. Um, and if I'm hitting an error, obviously I don't want that to happen. And I went through yesterday, uh, and if we open up Postman here, um, this is Postman, and you can see that I have a bunch of tests for this. So I have launch request, help intent, stop intent, repeat intent, and then inside here, I have a few speech con intents that I expect to work. So this is a US-based, um, I just noticed that I, oh, speech con intents. I thought that was contents. Uh, uh, this is Abracadabra in the English US um, locale. This is a German speech con in the English US locale, which should not work. And you can see that even the tests that I wrote for that are, does not include a speech con for Abra Hello. So I should not see this content um, in the response because it shouldn't do that. My skill should say, oh, I don't know that speech con, try this instead. And then I have another one that is the same speech con, but in German. So I'm actually checking to make sure that it does return it when I'm in German. So I should write more of those speech con intents, but that's fine. And then for the change voice requests, I actually have tests for all of the voices. And there's actually something I wanted to change here. So you can see that I've, I've made a request each time. Uh, every one of these, if we look at the body of these, they, uh, they're basically just my change voice intent with a name sp swapped out. Um, and so I have that for every one of the voices and I wanna take Alexa actually and make her the last one because they run these in order and um, I always end up with Russell's voice then after I've run my test because that actually does change values for me. So these are all of a bunch of tests that I can run. And so if I, if I come into this whole series and I say run these tests, if you guys haven't used Postman before, um, I have been working a little bit um, for sure. And so if I hit run Alexa dev tips, what you'll see here is it's going to run through and it's going to send every one of those requests out to my skill, get the response back and then run my tests to get it to tell me text, run my tests against it to tell me whether or not, um, anything broken. So I have 66 tests that are passing and zero that are failing. And what's also cool is that this is not error state is not something I have to duplicate. This is actually really nice functionality uh, for all of this. But if I come into Alexa DevTips and I choose edit, so this is the whole collection. 
in here I can set up a test that checks that is error. So it's gonna run this test against every single test that I have, but I don't have to, um, I don't have to like hard code that into everyone. It just runs this test on every one of the, the tests that I have in that folder and I don't have to like duplicate and copy it over and over. This also is true for the change voice request folder. So in this folder, if I choose edit on this, uh, Bretsky TC, what's up, Brett? I haven't seen you in person in so long, man. But thank you for the follow. Thank you for showing up here. Um, but you can see on this one, uh, this should be a change voice intent request. So this is something that I said for all the tests that run inside this folder, um, which is all the change voice ones, it runs all of those. So when we look at the runner, you can actually see that for these change voice, it says, is it, it's not an error. Um, it's not a change voice, it is a change voice intent. And then this is a custom test that I have just for a DD, right? I wanna make sure that it's actually returning a DD as the voice um, and that I've stored all the values and stuff in the right places. So the, all of these tests, I have way more than I need to write, but this is one way that I've done it in, um, in Postman. Uh, but the challenge is, is that I wanna be able to do a lot of this stuff locally. And so, one of the things that I'm working on is starting to write tests like this instead that are here local. Uh, the problem that I have is that I then have to spin up and run um, all of my, uh, do you sometimes get multiple responses back? No, I don't think so. Um, it, it doesn't appear that I'm getting multiple responses back. Um, but I have to run this here locally. And so that's, that's something that I'm still working on, something I need to figure out is um, how do I effectively run my Lambda code locally? And how do I run tests against that stuff? And how do I set up some of the rigging? So this is actually something, uh, for those of you that had an opportunity, I jumped over to my friend Clark Sell's stream last Friday, and that's what inspired a lot of this re-architecture. But I'm getting back on his channel today at two. I think it's at two. Uh, yeah, two, two o'clock Eastern time. And we're gonna go through a lot of this stuff. Like we, what we talked about was the chatbot, which is something that more traditionally runs in Node. It uses sockets to talk to the Twitch API. Like there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, this is a little bit simpler uh, in that regard. And we're gonna figure out how to get all of this stuff up and running. Now there's the obvious, Goldzula mentioned the local debugger in the cookbook. Um, yes, I could use something like that and use ngrok to be able to um, do like do that stuff, and that's what I really want to figure out is how do I still route through the Alexa engine, but end up hitting my code locally, and to be able to do things like breakpoints and inspections. So that's all stuff that I want to figure out, um, and I think between Clark and I, we will be able to uh, knock that out this afternoon. Hopefully, uh, he doesn't know what my expectations are, but uh, that's that's kind of where I'm going to steer things today. So anyway. Uh, back to the the structure and the architecture of all this, we have um, we have our index file. It has references to all of our handlers, and uh, in all of these handlers, we basically just call out to another file. And so, in my uh, handler folder, you can look at stop intent. Uh, looks pretty simple and straightforward, right? There's nothing terribly complex. I don't have a reprompt, obviously, because it's stop, um, but it it works really really well. Um, and what this allows me to do is to extract all of this individual functionality um, and see what kind of response I actually get back. So I can call just this stop intent function now from my tests, like I was showing you wherever that went. Um, I can check, I can test my launch request and say, hey, I'm gonna pass you a JSON file. So I should show that I have a launch request JSON file that looks like this. And in my tests, um, I basically just pass in that JSON file into the launch request handler, and then I, I expect what the result should be, right? And it, it produces back to me that handler input dot response builder object. Uh, and I can go into that and look at what's going on inside there. What are my session variables? Did things land in the appropriate places? Uh, and start writing a lot of tests this way. So this is where I'm headed. I'm not, I'm not done with this yet. And my goal is when I finally have this skill template done is that I have all of my... Um, core beginner functions wrapped in tests so that we um, can be confident that everything that we're starting with is working and then we can write tests and produce code and, and do our red green refactor kind of scenario. So that's a long way of saying that um, this is all a lot different, um, but it's still, it's still really the same. It's just structured in slightly a different way. 
So I think what I really want to do, and th this is what um, this is where I really got excited about this stuff, is if we come here and we look at this, is it this? No, it's not that part. Um, but if I come in here, one of the things that I can do, if I look at, um, de no, create a new skill project, this is the piece that I want, and I say this. I want to get us to a point where I have a GitHub repository that has all this stuff in it. Um, and I can say, ask new template URL and provide the URL to uh, the Git file in that directory, in that, in that GitHub repository, um, and be off and running using my own template, my own skill, right? Uh, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking I wanted to do today. Because then... I have a good starter kit and I have a good base template. And when I have new things for my helper and whatever else, I'll develop them there. Um, and that way it's already part of my starter template. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I was thinking. So if we look at this, one of the first frustrations that I had today, this is a, this is a new thing, is skill.json. This in the, in the CLI version one, whatever you put here, was where it would deploy your code. Uh, so if you specify, like you could go create an Alexa, uh, I'm sorry, a Lambda function someplace, and you could um, just specify the ARN here. Great, it would it would work, and everything would be hunky dory. But I just said hunky dory. Goodness. Okay, so this is um, this is where that used to be. But now there's this new file, ask states, which lives up here in the dot ask Lambda folder or dot ask folder. Um, and in here, we define what the actual ARN of the Lambda is and what the IAM role for that Lambda function is, um, which I've never had to specify before. So I, that, that felt a little strange to me. But if I don't change both of those, it doesn't deploy at all. Um, and so I had to go through and tweak this a little bit so that I was talking to this Alexa skill template function instead of the original one that created for me. And this is still something I haven't gotten around to. But if I look at my functions, it created this uh, ask Alexa skill template default default in a big long number. This is the same kind of function name that I'm using for Alexa dev tips. And I think I'm going to flip over so that um, I am using something clean and nice like this. I like naming like this. It's much easier to find. Um, even though I can do things like um, templates. I don't know if I could actually type. And you can see that it'll find, uh, I don't know why it's giving me that whole list, but those are all the things that it thinks matches template. But at the top here, we have the two that actually have the word template in them. And if I say something like Star Wars, you can see that I get a list of the Star Wars ones. Um, yeah, I have no shortage of functions, but this is, this is four years of learning and building for Alexa. So... Um, Lots of experiments here. Most most of them are not seeing any traffic whatsoever. So don't don't be impressed, uh, because they're they're most certainly not um, being used in any meaningful way. They're just here. Okay, so we have this Alexa skill template uh, lambda function. This is where our code is going to live, and uh, I've already done a deploy, a basic deploy on this. So what I really want to do then is once I fix that, and I feel like that thing's going well. Um, and this skill.json file is fine for now. Um, the first thing that I want to do is come over to, this is the dev tips version that I'm working on, right? And so the first thing that I want to do is take my package.json. And you can see that I have node fetch here. I've also got some dev dependencies for Jest. I'm actually going to leave the dev dependencies off right now. I'm trying to minimalize this. Uh, that's stuff that you can add in yourself. But I will leave fetch. And I'll leave the ask SDK. And I will leave... Will I leave Airtable? I probably will leave Airtable because this is really meant to be for me and there's almost never a time that I don't use that. Um, so I'm gonna leave Airtable in there. The rest of this is, well, you know what? I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave Jest in there because I do call it here. So let's just take this over to this. Like so, and we'll We'll change this to Alexa skill template. And this will be um, a starter 
template for building Alexa skills. Okay, and so all of this looks good to me. Okay, so our package.json is good. Uh, let's let's drop a. If we look at uh, yeah, we haven't even run npm install yet, so I have no anything. So let's do that. See lambda npm install. That should go. That'll go through my package.json and go get all the things that I need um, that are not currently here. Waiting for a node modules folder to show up. I haven't seen one yet. Yeah, thanks, Karthik. Had to had to chop some hair off for sure. Okay, so there's our node modules folder, and you can see that it's installed a bunch of stuff based on the the stuff that I have in my package JSON. So that's there. Uh, I desperately needed a haircut, and it happened yesterday. Finally, God, it was so long. It was so so long. Uh, if you jump on my Twitter, or my Instagram, or whatever, you can see a before and after. But it was uh, it was bad. Okay, so the other stuff that I want to do, I mentioned that in here, I'm going to create a set of um, a set of folders for handlers and code that I'm running. And so I think I want to reinvent this a little bit already, but let's come into my Lambda folder and I'm going to create one called Amazon. And this feels weird to do it in all caps, but I, th I think it'll be good when we're done. So this is going to be called index.js. And in here, we're going to do... Um, Let's, let's just remember how to do that. I was, I was going to try and do it from memory, but I'm better off. Uh, this is the piece that I want. Actually, let's just take the whole thing and then we'll copy chop most of it out. So uh, back here, I have this, and I don't really need any of these yet. And in fact, I need the first one, whatever that's going to be. So we'll do, um, we'll call this stop intent. And we're going to require stop intent. There's a reason that I'm capitalizing these two which will, I will explain in just a minute. Uh, well, helps if you can uh, get all your caps the same. So that all looks good. Now what I need is a new file inside this folder called stopintent.js. And in here, we're just gonna have a function, stopintent, handler. Uh, almost always these will have handler input as the, the parameter that's passed through and then we'll do module.exports equals stop intent. Yeah, you can see exactly where I'm going, Gold Zulu. Uh, I'm trying to make it look like the right calls. So this is good. Um, this doesn't do anything, but it's it's good. Um, then index.js, um, this is where um, I want to go to my stop handler. So that's this thing here. And we're gonna take this, chop it out, and we'll put it in the stop intent. Oh, goodness, I, I didn't name the file properly. Rename. Okay, that looks good. So my stop intent code just looks like this. There's not a lot to it. Now I will obviously change this out for what we have. Um, would be interested to know an ideal percentage split between time spent learning and time spent heads down coding with what you've learned. Um, well, one of the things that I think is going to like, th this is a, this is a long-term play. Initially, um, I got into, uh, node and Alexa and all this stuff. I like, I knew enough JavaScript to be capable. Um, and I used a lot of the templates that we had and I followed patterns that I saw and it was only recently, like the last month or so, that I said, there's gotta be a better way to do this. There's gotta be a way to give me testing, to give me access to a lot of other things, to simplify the things that I'm doing rather than just continuing to use the same patterns over and over. And so I would say that right now I'm spending, like I'm I'm doing he heads down coding with the intention of learning, if that makes sense, Trade Last. Um, I, can, I can always evolve and like I, I, I reserve the right to be able to go and change my philosophy, change my approach, change my syntax, change whatever, like I'm doing it right now. 
yesterday I wrote this code. Yesterday I wrote all this stuff. I have my stop intent living in a folder called handler and I've already gone through the process of saying, well, I don't think that's how it should work because stop intent doesn't look like it's intent. Um, it, it doesn't look like Amazon.stop intent like this. I want it to look like that because then it's familiar. So this is just a constant um, battle with asking questions and saying, uh, what is the right way? What is the what is the way that I should do this? Is there a better way? And I, I think if you're constantly asking that question, I know this works, but is there a better way? Is there a faster way? Um, and one of the things that this architecture, this thing that we're working on right now gives me is the ability to test things. Where I've never really had that power before, now I feel empowered uh, to be able to write functions that are small enough and testable so that I can go write a bunch of tests and say, okay, these are obviously all failing, but let's get us to a point where it's not failing, where it's actually working, right? So this is my stop intent. This is the index.js. Um, and in here, what I'm gonna do is first, I need to include a new file. So we're gonna say const, um, and we'll do Amazon equals require Amazon, like so. And this is gonna include the new file that we created inside the Amazon folder called index.js. So index.js, if we open that, um, and that's exactly where I'm at goal to. I, I feel like I'm just accelerating right now off of the, the new framework, the new rig, um, and it's gonna allow me to be way more productive in the future. So it's, what I'm doing is including this file, which of course is requiring stop intent, which is my stop intent file. So now I should be able to say, if I come back to my index.js, um, we go to my stop intent handler, wherever that was, did I lose it? Help, cancel and stop, okay. So right here, I should be able to say return amazon.stopintent handler input. And that's it, and it looks just like I would expect it to, although I, I'm expecting, um, I think it's because it's not returning anything. So, no, it is returning. Oh, I have something wrong, because I would have expected those all to turn yellow. Um, or maybe not, maybe I'm, maybe I'm incorrect. Trela says, in triaging my to, to learn list, I end up with things I immediately use, but need to allocate more to the long-term learning. I need to use the saw instead of cutting away with the dull saw. Um, yeah, so I think this is right. So like this is what I would expect, where I see all of those handlers and then I can call into that stuff. So I think in this one, if we go to my stop, which is here. Yeah, no, that's that's working properly. Um, but it like I like how this syntax looks a lot. Um, and what I'll need to figure out is what do I call the other ones? Because if we think about Amazon stop intent, Amazon cancel intent. And then I have these other ones that are um, uh, Maxi Alpha, not 79, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. Um, we are a world of nonsense and Alexa. Um, and today we're focusing more on Alexa than we are on nonsense. But uh, this, is, uh, this is what we're doing today. We're, we're refactoring how we think about building skills. Karthik wants to know what everybody's doing for the weekend. My goodness, sir, Friday only started. I'm not ready for the weekend yet. Um, but I plan on doing some fun stuff because that's what weekends are for. So I have other, I have other handlers for things like hello world intent. And I feel like I can't call it this. Let, let's, let's take a, a historical journey through how I think about, uh, handlers in Alexa. Most of the time, most of the time. When I build a handler, so like the hello world intent handler, all of the requests for hello world intent are gonna come into hello world intent handler. But that doesn't mean that's always true. And if I really wanna keep all of this code concise and testable and separate, then there's a high likelihood that I would build multiple handlers for the same intent when different conditions are met, right? And those conditions are defined in the can handle. So I probably shouldn't call the folder, or I shouldn't call the function hello world intent because that's not necessarily accurate. Um, 
I should I should call it they should all be handlers. But I need an I need a new naming convention and I don't know what that is. Like it might be like Hello World Intent Standard or something like that. So that when I have Hello World Intent Edge Case, whatever it is. Good morning, Kevin Evans. Thank you for being here, man. Good to see you. Um <laughs> Trade Last says He's 90% done with his new skill, so he only has 90% left to go. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, oh, Gold Zool, you have a 15-year-old, 15-month-old boy? That's exciting. That's That would consume my weekend, man. I miss having little kids. Uh, my kids are 16 and 12 now, and uh, it's a new awesome. Um, but it's not the same as just, like, camping out on the couch and building blocks and all the little things. Four kids. Good for you, man. Uh, good for you four kids that's that's i think that's more than i can handle but i'm i'm proud of you for taking the journey uh anyway so i want to think about how i want to call these folders and i feel like i have this amazon one and i love i love how this looks already right like how how cool does that look that it's just that basic um what i need to figure out is what i want to do 13, 11, 6, and 15 months. Wow. Um, how do I want to do the other ones? How would I do... Let's look at some of the examples I have here in the Alexa um, dev tips one. My speech content. I called it speech content. First of all, I think i got to keep that capitalization because I just like it. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to com like what I'm trying to do, Gold Zulu, is figure out what is a good starter template that I could use all the time. So I don't really want it to be dependent on what handlers or what intents I'm going to have in my skill. Um, and I have like this Amazon thing makes sense, right? I'm going to have some built-in Amazon intents if I come back here, um, and all of those will be handled by code that lives in this Amazon folder. But I think for the other ones, I'm trying to think if I wanted to come up with a prefix. So like I have Alexa, I'm sorry, I have Amazon.stopintent. I might just have handler dot uh, hello world intent or something or custom. Yeah, that was custom was another thought. I don't know that I want to do the big caps. Maybe I do. Maybe it's custom. No, it's not custom intent. It's none of that because these are these are handlers. Again, I have to remember that I'm trying to separate my logic from the intents, and so this is much more about being handlers than it is about being intents. But each file that I build, each fu function that I construct, those will all be. Uh, I like that startup. I'll just prefix them all with Jeff. Um, I think it's going to be handler. I think I think that's going to be it. Uh, so we'll create a folder, handlers, handler, handlers, handlers. Okay, and so in there we need a new index file that's going to look very similar to this one. Um, inside handlers. No, 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 index.js, okay. So this file has this. W. Giorgio, good morning. Um, I missed uh, missed your entrance earlier, but thank you for uh, for showing up again and again. You guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> Jeff. Namaste. Uh, so this isn't going to be stop intent though. We might have a what's a custom intent? I might have all the time. I don't think I have a custom intent. I would have all the time. That's interesting. I hadn't really considered that. You would have to have a custom intent in every skill, but I don't actually know what the name of a custom intent I would have all the time would be. Well, we'll do hello world intent uh, as a thing, just because it's there and because you have to have one to be able to deploy your skill. And then we'll create a new handler file called 
Node.js, and that will have a function called hello world intent where I pass in the handler input. And then down here we'll do a uh, module.exports hello world intent. Okay, so we've got the beginnings of that. And then if we go back to our original index file, wherever that is, we have a hello world intent handler. So I'll just take this and just drop it in there just so we have something in that code. Um, and we'll go back and revisit what that is in a minute. That's great. This is great because now I can say return um, handlers dot. Oh, I didn't include it. Let me let me do that first. So that's my Amazon. This is my handlers. Uh, I have to change the name too. And down here in my hello world, wherever that went, we should be able to say now handlers dot hello world intent intent request. That's not right. What am I doing? Handler input. Okay, so those kinds of things work pretty well. I th I think that looks pretty good. I have to call this something, uh, and handlers seems okay. So. That's pretty awesome. Inside Amazon then, I'm just gonna create the files. I'm not gonna do anything to build them out yet, but inside Amazon we'll have help intent. That's gonna be one that we build and we'll have another one that is um, repeat intent and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, we're gonna have a, um, oh, here's another interesting question. A launch request isn't an intent, but it is a handler. So I feel like in handlers, that probably will get the launch request. Why are you keeping the handler in index.js? Why not move the whole handler to the handlers folder? Um, there, W. Giorgio, the reason that I'm not moving the whole thing is because what I want to be able to do is test the individual pieces of functionality. So your question is, why am I moving only this code and not all of this code? Um, because I don't, I don't want, like, I feel like I only really want to test this piece, the engine that is the transformation, right? Because that's all we're really looking at is there's a, there's a transformation between what I passed in, the JSON that I passed in, gets transformed into the JSON that I pass out. Um, and that's the stuff that I'm gonna wanna test. I, I don't want to have to wrap all of this stuff in tests as well. Um, may, I mean, maybe I should, but I feel like uh, keeping the handlers here and then being able to export them all right here, all of this works pretty well for me. Um, I don't, I don't know that I need to munge up the other files with this kind of plumbing, which is all it really is. Um, it's a, re that's a really valid question though. Like it's making me question, um, what is it like, should I be doing that stuff? No, I feel like I'm still very happy with this choice. I think, am I happy with this choice? I'm happy with this choice. So, um, all right, Karthik, thanks for man. Thanks, man. Um, so let's, let's get into what we, what we really did over here. This is the dev tips version. So I have, is this the dev tips version? Yeah. Okay. So I have my return. Oh, I actually have to throw a weights in there too, or I will get burned later. So let's take this. Yeah, the old, the old include days. Um, so we come into handlers, we have launch request, and we need a file here that's a function launch 
request handler input. Whoa, let's not do that. And then module.exports launch request. Launch request code currently looks like this. It will change in a moment. Um, but that means that we need to come into our index here. So you can see there's definitely a little more rigging um, that you have to create. But uh, by doing this, this gives me more flexibility. Uh, and that is something that I live for, is flexibility. Launch request. OK. So those two files are up and running um, and are included. Yeah, it makes everything much cleaner too, which I, uh, I know a few of you have said, man, how do you live in a file that's a thousand lines long? And I've just never really got around to dealing with that, I guess. So this is going to be return, whoop, return await handlers dot launch request handler input, just like so. And so that... Um, this is what this file is going to look like for the most part. It's just going to be a call out to some other function. But then that function becomes much more testable. So I have my hello world intent. I have my help intent. Uh, but I haven't actually created anything in those. So we can do function help intent. Handler input. And you can see that these obviously all look very consistent um, in how we think about this stuff. But... It gets different when you start thinking about how you actually handle these handlers. Module.exports help intent. Uh, let's go look at that help intent and see what's in there. Okay, gone. Help intent is over here. Drop some code here. And again, we're going to be replacing all of this so it doesn't it doesn't matter so much, but I'm just trying to get the structure there. And then this becomes return await handlers. No, I didn't add it. Um, and it's Amazon anyway. But let's add it to the index first. So here now I should be able to say Amazon.help. God, I love how that looks. Did, did I lose something? Help intent. Oh, I didn't export it. If you don't export it, it doesn't work. OK, so that looks good. Uh, now this should work. Dot. No. Um, what? Help intent. That looks good. That looks really nice and clean. Um, and we have the index file somewhere that has the help intent and the stop intent. That looks good. Yeah, all of that looks good. So why doesn't my index Amazon dot I don't know why that wasn't near the top of the list, but that's okay. We have Amazon, we have help intent. It knows what the inputs are. Beautiful, I love all of that. Okay. Cancel and stop, we've already done. Session ended request, I don't really have anything to do with that. Um, intent reflector, um, this is kind of custom. It's not, I mean, it is a handler, I guess. Yeah, I'll do it. Handlers, intent reflector. This is something that uh, one of my teammates built a while back. And it's, it's meant to let you know when you 
try to use an intent that you haven't written any code for, um, it screams and says, wait a second, that's you asked for this intent, but I don't have any code to run. Um, so we'll do this. Uh, yeah, we probably can. Intent reflector, intent reflector. And if we just copy it, we can do this. And I haven't actually created that file yet. Oh, no, I did, but I didn't do anything inside of it. Function, intent, reflector. Okay, and let's go see what I did in my intent reflector here, because this is, uh, if we go to handler, intent reflector, take that one, because I, I made some tweaks that I liked to it. This has all the Airtable stuff in it, so um, this is where a lot of my includes will start to come in. So we'll need um, const helper, equals require, let's just go look at what I had there. And I don't have the Airtable folder, but I don't know that that's really what I want to call it yet either. Um, And I guess I can. Maybe I shouldn't do this yet. If we come back to my index, intent reflector, I could just put this in there for now. No, because it wants that Alexa function, which I also don't want to bring in. So Alright, we'll just we'll just play here a little bit. So um if I come look at the intent reflector, there's a few things that you should see in here. So the first is I have a new comment thing that I'm doing. So it actually tells me what file to look in rather than just which intent or which uh, handler I'm hitting. Um, it tells me what file to look in. So this is my new console log. Now I'm going to be tweaking this too and probably using something like um, uh, debug, um, which uh, was something I started using when Clark and I talked. But it's fine for now, and I'll, I'll go back and, and swap this stuff out. I have my helper file, get locale. So let's go get that file, which is here, and just make a copy of this, because we're, we're going to need this. So we'll create a new file right next to this called helper. I don't even know that that's what I want to call it, but it's fine. And we'll drop that in there. We now have our helper.js. So what else does that intent reflector care about? Um, helper, helper, you just triggered intent name. That's all great. But I need this air table stuff. I need get random speech. And that requires some stuff. So let's let's take a look at what I have in my air table folder. Get random speech. We'll just take this. And uh, do I really want to create a folder called air table? feels like it should be like data, something more generic. So if I did want to switch, switch that stuff out, I could. Um, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with Airtable. No, it just gets too confusing. We'll, we'll do data. That is, this isn't a directory. What is that? Inside Lambda. New directory, data, there we go. Inside data, we're gonna have a file um, that is get random speech. But we'll also have to have that index file. 
So get random speech. And what do I pass in to get random speech? Table and a locale. Well, I guess I have all that code on my clipboard, huh? Just like that. So in here I have fetch and that's included and I have helper and that's included. So this, this file should just work, but I need this index file, which looks like this guy over here. Um, I would have to write my own adapter for it, Gold Zulu. Um, I have considered doing that, but I feel like the way that I use it is kind of different than how we generally think of the adapters. So that's why I have not done that. So we're going to get rid of these for now. Unspecified is here. My goodness. What a nice day it is to have Clark joining our ranks. Um, let's get rid of that. So Clark, what I'm working on right now is um, taking some, so I refactored how I think about Alexa skills and how I'm building them. Um, so uh, if you look at like my main index file, I have these conditions that determine like, oh, if it's a launch request or if it's a speech content or whatever, these are all the things funneling into my skill. Um, then what I've basically taken is the functionality uh, for when we need to do something uh, and broken those out into individual files where I just pass handler input. And then my core functions uh, for each way that I would respond to a user are all broken down into their own core function functionality, uh, which allows me to then write tests against those things, which allows me to um, have a, a much cleaner, nicer interaction. So this is, a, this is a skill that I was working on and now what I'm trying to do is convert that into a template that I can store on my GitHub that will um, be my starter template for skills going forward. So this is, um, th that's what we're working on right now. So uh, if you have questions or whatever, please ask, but that's, um, that's the thing that I'm building. So I have um, uh, this data thing sitting here. That all looks fine. Uh, I have my index where I get random speech. That's great. Uh, I need to close down a bunch of these files. That would be good. Um, because get uh, intent reflector was the thing that I was really trying to fix for. So let's go look at that one for a moment. So this now has Airtable. And if I look at Airtable, that's not coming through. And that's because I am not... Oh, because I called it data. Never mind. So we, we decided not to re return to... Uh, not to call it Airtable. So this is now gonna be called data. And if I do that, now I have get random speech uh, as my function and I'm passing in the table that I wanna pull from in my locale. And then I have helper included also, so that is great. So, all right, we're, so we're on our way. So if we come back to our main index, uh, that is not it. Um, if we look at our main index, we now have intent reflector working. So now I should be able to get rid of this and just say return await um, handlers.intent reflector. Oh, that's so nice. Okay. Um, error handler, we're going to do the same thing with. Um, Yeah, trade list, I'm with you. Command W and Command Q are awfully close together uh, for slightly different operations. And then we have error. I guess I guess we'll drop that in here too. We'll do a error.js, maybe. So what error will give us is um, what to do when there's an error, right? And that, this isn't like a request or an intent, so we're just going to call it error. The file doesn't have anything in it yet, so let's do some stuff with that. Function error handler input. Okay, 
Um, and then if we go look at my air handler, again, we'll just take the stuff they have in here for now. We will be tweaking this out to be cooler and better, but um, we can go to our air.js and drop this here. And that's fine. I don't have any includes or anything I need for that. So that's great. And then this can get saved once I do return await um, handlers dot error handler input. Okay. So that more or less breaks down our entire file. This is this is the template file that they give you when you do ask new in the CLI, um, where you just get to uh, say, like create a new template and it gives me the hello world intent handler um, and all the stuff that we have here. Um, I do, yeah, all, all of these will need to be async actually. You just saved me hours of debugging. Thank you. Um, all right, so that is that, and this is this. And we just do this because most of my functions make a call out to Airtable to go get speech, because I don't want any speech in my skill uh, so that I can internationalize it easily. And so, Um, don't make them async, just return the function. Um, I think we'll have to refactor that this afternoon, Clark. By making it async like that, you actually create three promises. But if I'm, if I'm coming in here and I have like the intent reflector, this one does this, right? Um, this is my intent reflector, right? So in here, I'm making an await call because this get random speech so if no await, no async, yeah so, but then I have this this fetching here but I find that when I If I don't do that stuff, it blows right past it. So you're saying I can get rid of all of these and I'm good. I mean, I'll, I'll happily trust you until it doesn't work. But so, you're saying that I don't need it here. I mean, it still feels like I need it here. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, let's let's keep charging forward here. I will I will remove those for Clark, and we'll find out if they work here in just a second. So that all looks good. I guess I don't need this. And we should see if we have the word await anywhere. Get rid of those. Okay, so we've ripped all of that stuff out. That's great. If I can do that, that's wonderful. Um, we have our hello world intent handler. There's some stuff that we, we need to do now based on uh, the functionality I really want to have. So let's look at my launch request file in the template that I built over the week, which is here. And we'll take this code instead. Now there's a there's a few pieces to this. Um, so let's go to our launch request, get rid of what's there and put this there instead. So you can see here that I have 
my launch request set action. Um, I'm, using, I'm calling helper, so I need helper and uh, data to come in here. So let's go back to the intent reflector where we did that. Just grab both of these. And so this air table needs to become data. So I have helper and data. Those are both good. Is there anything else that I'm doing in my main index file that's weird or dependent on anything? I don't think there is. Does the launch request function need async because you await inside of it? Let's take a look at that. Probably. Yeah. Until somebody tells me I don't. Uh, yeah, that definitely would. And so all of them actually will because they all do the same kind of thing. I know it doesn't yet, but it will. So let's go get let's go get air while we're here. Um, I don't I don't know I don't know why these are all things that I need to talk with you about um, because I have if we look here like I have ES lint I don't know if like there's probably just a step that I missed I would guess um, sometimes you just got to forge forward. So I was looking at the error. Which is this. Taking that and getting rid of this. Um, I have helper and uh, the data now that I need to grab. Again, all, all of these are going to have this. These become data. Hmm. Anything else that I need to change there? I don't think so. So I'm trying to get us to a point where we can actually run this thing. Well, let's let's just give that a run. Let's just see what happens. Um, and if there's anything that's obviously broken, it'll it'll tell me. I haven't gotten to running this stuff locally yet, so um, I have a path to it. I just haven't done it yet. But there's another cool feature that I, I wanted to show you guys if you haven't seen it before. Let's actually blow this up. No, I don't have auto run for Lambda stuff yet. Um, I was using Nodemon on the the um, excuse me on the chatbot, but there's some things that we moved pretty quickly through on Friday, and I'm not sure how to get them running here. If I need to get them running here, so uh, have you guys seen this command? It's uh, do I have it? No, I don't have it here. So if we do ask dialog. Yes. I don't know if you guys have seen this. This is a ask dialog. Um, this is uh, this is me basically interacting with the skill. Let me uh, let me shrink this down so you guys can actually see this. So you can see that I have user here. Uh, so I can say, oh, what's the? I don't even know the name of my skill right now because I haven't changed it. So let's talk about skill JSON. The invocation name is in my NUS. Let's call this a um, skill template. Okay, so I can say, I probably have to build that again. So give me a moment as I get this right. Uh, this is ask dialogue. Um, 
this allows me to basically have a typed conversation with my skill. Um, and I've only started using it recently, but it's, uh, it's pretty handy rather than jumping over to a browser and, and doing all of my typing there. Uh, the, the thing that I don't have that I do have in my browser is the ability to repeat commands. Um, but in general, I think there's probably a way where I could even run a script against this. I think. Uh, we'll find out. Did I not tell you to deploy? Sorry, I did the wrong thing. Um, so we're just going to push this up one more time since I made a change to the invocation name. I don't, I don't know that I love this ask dialog yet, but it is kind of nice to have it right in the same place uh, where we can do a lot of these things. We're already there working. Why not? Um, I don't think the up and down arrow keys work, um, but I'll, I'll check that in just a second. That would actually be pretty nice. Let's, uh, let's let this finish uploading, and then we'll do that. In the meantime, I'm regretting not having brought water this morning. Come on. Gold Zulu. Uh, I know, I need some water, man, badly. Uh, Kama, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the team. Um... It's, uh, it's good to spend some points. Uh, I totally understand, Gold Zulu. All right, so we are almost there. We've almost deployed. Oh, my gosh. Ex Mateus Negrelli is here as well. Um, you're going to be Ex Mateus, or maybe Ex Mate. Um, in your, if you're already in the dialogue, that's super cool, Jeff Nunn. So let's, let's give that a run, just so you guys can see this. So this is what the dialogue looks like. So I can say, open skill template, which is the... I don't, it didn't say I got rated. Just a couple new people showing up. It's great. I'm glad they're here. Welcome to the show. Well, please participate in the chat. Um, request to skill endpoint resulted in an error. Well, that's that's not ideal. Let's go look at a browser then. Um, yeah, I have a console open here. So let's go look at my skills and see what's going on with that skill. Test. Open skill template. There was a problem with the requested skills response. Cool. I love problems with my requested skill response. Jeff Nunn, good morning. Thank you for uh, for being here. I actually wanted to talk to you, Jeff Nunn. I understand you've got some ways to. Uh, uh, get the CloudWatch logs right down to your machine. I was doing a little reading on it last night, but I didn't take any action. Um, but man, I'm tired of going in here and digging. So I want Alexa skill template, maybe. This new interface is not my favorite. 11.17. What could possibly be the issue? Handlers, error.js, error is not defined. It's always something dumb. Oh, I just realized that... Am I working from the wrong editor, too? I was working from the wrong editor. Um... I modified a logger project that shows better colored logs in the terminal that is really helpful. Yeah, uh, I need to see, use, play with that. That sounds awesome. Um, I'm sorry, what? So you're saying that in here, if I go look at index, error and error are there. All of that looks right. What could be wrong here? Error.js line 9. 
Okay. Ah, because I'm a dummy. Uh, because that requires two parameters, where all the others only require one. That's right. So um, if we look at if we look at my index file here, you can see that my error handler actually passes two values. So I need to pass both of them here. Um, that's a simple miss on my part. Flyboy fifteen sixty five morning. We are um, we're in the process of refactoring. Uh, our architecture for how we think about Alexa skills, breaking things into individual components that are testable, uh, running tests against those things, uh, lots and lots of fun. Um, and ultimately what this will result in is a, um, a skill template. That's what I'm actually building right now that I can use every time I start a new skill, I can just pull this thing down uh, and use this using the Ask CLI. So they have, an, they have an Ask New, but there's a parameter where you can specify uh, basically a Git repository. Uh, you can go and grab, um, I'm going to go and grab this template every time that I build something. So let's see now if I do uh, the ask dialog, if my skill works. Open skill template. It's a good sign. No, it's not. Okay. Again, we've never tested or run this code before, so this is not surprising. Um, I would have done this more incrementally, but I was in a bit of a hurry. Um, I tend to write, it seems like I write code slightly different when I'm live than when I'm sitting by myself. You cannot read property stack of undefined in error.js. Oh, because I didn't, uh, I needed to deploy again, that's right. Whoop, nope. Um, because I noticed that in my index, I wasn't passing the error here either, so I had to fix that, and I fixed it after they deployed the code. So let's just fix that, and then we're good to go. So Flyboy1565, um, I, I feel like I've seen your name before. Are you uh, are you doing a bunch of stuff with Alexa? Tell me, uh, tell me what you're working on. Tell me what's uh, what's going on in the world. Where are you based? Things to know. Urban Blaster, you've got to have four thousand points by now. How have we not gotten you? Uh, are you? I don't think you're on the wall yet. Are you? If you're not on the wall, we need to get you on the wall. Uh, all right, let's try this one more time with the dialog. Ask dialog. Um, and then this is, is it local? we're just going to do this. Dumb to try to remember. Um, open skill template. Nope. Open skill templates. You gonna work this time? Dang it. Cannot read property length of undefined in get random item. I mean, this makes sense. <laughs> you wasted them on hydration. That's no good. Oh, Flyboy, that sounds super cool, man. Backend Python dev. Works with Java devs to quick fix between releases. Death heat of Phoenix, yeah, man, it's uh, it's lovely here in Ohio. Uh, it's been in the mid 70s, low 80s every day. Uh, we've gotten a little more rain than I'd like, but it's uh, it's good. All right, fine. So if I look at no, if I look at this file, we're trying to get data from these tables, but I haven't actually. There's a bunch that's broken about this. Because if we look at my get random speech, this is trying to get these. Huh. I don't really want to do that yet. This is where 
using Airtable by default is going to be tricky if I, if I want to do that at all. I think I don't want to do that. I think what I should do instead is just comment these out, knowing that I could use them in the future. And instead, we're going to get rid of the change voice stuff too. So we're just going to say speak output. Whoa, let's not do that. Delete, tick. No time like now to fix things, right? Um, that's good, and then I don't need any of this handler input nonsense. We're going for simpler. We're going for simpler. Action query. I need a closing tick. Get rid of that comma. That looks better. But one of the things that I really need to do now as I think about this is go back through Hello World Intent doesn't do anything. Intent Reflector, you can't have that. And you can't have this. Let's go back to Error. Take this piece. And Intent Reflector goes here. Okay, I think that looks good. Speak output. Action query doesn't exist. That's a problem here too, right? Like I don't... Hmm. Killing me. So this needs to be... Jeff. There was an error. This needs to be, what should we do now? Okay. Same thing here. Speak output is there, but I can say, what should we do now? I don't actually have an action query. Although I don't, I don't want to break out the variables. Like that's all fine. We just need to tweak this. Um. Okay, that's good. What else do we have? Launch request does the same thing. So we're going to do a uh, welcome to the skill template. And uh, what, what would you like to do? Get rid of this change voice stuff. We won't actually be using that. Like so. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Get random speech. We're not actually using now. I think I think we're closer. I think we're we're better than we were. Um, hopefully this will get us to a better working state. Because I really do, I want to leave that Airtable stuff in there. Because I'm going to use it. But when I first build the skill, I don't, I don't want that stuff there. Because I haven't created the tables, I don't have the API keys. I don't have any of that stuff in there. So, should we try Ask Dialog and see what we get? We'll give it a try. Um, open skill template. Please work. It's not going to work. Oh, it did. Okay, awesome. Uh, help.
Okay, so this is this is the ask dialog that I was mentioning. So you can see I can just go back and forth with me typing to my skill. So I can say, um, hello. And it says, hello world. Um, and then I can say, um, help again. And the reason it doesn't do that, and that's fine, is if we look at our hello world intent, you can see that it's not reprompting the user. And because it's not reprompting, um, this is why um, the skill breaks right here, because I basically killed the session. Uh, unspecified software, Clark Cell, thank you for being here, man. I will see you at one central also. Um, I'll be over there working with Clark, figuring out some other, uh, other ways to tweak this stuff out. But we have a working template. We have a working code base. Um, and I feel like this get random speech and all these other functions that I have over there, I feel like I should bring them over. Um, so if we look at my Airtable stuff, like I have a get random speech con. I don't think I need that one. Get user record though. This one seems like a, something I would use. So let's take that one. And uh, we'll get in here and do data um, get user record. This is something that I use all the time. So this goes here. All of that looks good. I don't think I do anything weird with speech in this. No. <laughs> Gold Zulu, I'm glad your bot is back, man. Um, all right, so get user record. I need it to be added here. Get user record. And what's nice about this is it really does do what the function says, get user record. It gets me a user record. So it either creates one or it just retrieves it. But in either case, it retrieves it and, and gets it for me. Um, get user record using... Um, Airtable to do so. So that's the get user record stuff there. Uh, is there anything else over here that I really want to take? Update poly voice, I don't care about. Handler, um, I have a help intent, repeat, oh, repeat intent is something we should do. So if I go back into my Amazon folder, we have the repeat intent file, but we didn't do anything with it yet. So let's do that function, um, repeat intent. Handler input. So Jeff Nunn, if you're still here, I wanted to show you something. This I think we did this before you got here, but I think this is uh, this is pretty cool. So one of the things that I've done in breaking these things out, exports, uh, repeat intent. Um, I have this repeat intent. Let me grab the code that I want to use for that, which is this. It's not very complex at all. Um, and we drop that in here. And that's all great. And yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so um, what I've done for this repeat intent is I need to come into my here and find the, um, the sample. I guess we can just take this like so. So let's create a Amazon.repeat intent. I don't know why this isn't part of the default template. It should just, it should just be there. Um, and so I have this Amazon repeat intent that's now defined. And when you come in here, I will have a something like help. We'll take the help one. And we'll call this one the repeat intent handler. And this is if it's Amazon repeat intent. But this is so cool. Um, my syntax for calling this stuff is Amazon.repeat intent. So I'm actually calling out to a function in a collection um, called Amazon. And so when I return this, the syntax that I have here looks exactly like what I would want it to look like. You know, it looks like the, the intent name that I'm calling, but it's only for the built-in functions. I thought this was kind of a cool way to handle this. And then I just pass off the handler input. And when we look at the repeat intent file, um, what we do is we look in the session attributes, and I have two values that I save, previous speak and previous reprompt. And those things are saved on, um, on the way out of the skill. So this is another thing that we need to grab out of here. This is a key piece of all of this. So if we come down to the bottom, the first thing we need is these three lines. Well, I'll take all four because it'll be cleaner to paste. Let's do all of this. Copy. 
and we're going to go to our index file, which is this one, go down to the bottom, and we're going to get rid of this and do that instead. Okay, so this gives me my request log and response log, which I don't currently have in my template here. So we're going to add those, and we will get those from right here. So I have response log, and I'm going to comment some stuff out of this, but response log and request log. So uh, in here, I have my get user record stuff, which I'm not going to use. But this, this is the key piece to the repeat intent. Um, and it's nice because it happens at the end, so you don't have to make calls all over the place. And Jeff Dunn, if you were following my chime nonsense yesterday, uh, you probably saw me making this mistake. But we're going to get rid of user record because we don't need that right now. And we don't need user record dot fields and we don't need this one. But the rest I do. And then the response log, I am logging out the response builder and calling this function called put repeat data. So if we look at my helper file, I have a function somewhere called put repeat data. And it's a little bit bigger, but let me show what it does here. So the first thing I do, obviously grab session attributes. Then I call out to response builder and I get the response. So this is actually the same thing that I call when I want to pass it back to Alexa. The difference is I'm not returning it. So I grab that value and I get to see everything that's in the response. And I can look at what the output speech uh, of the SSML is. And I'm going to unwrap it with these speak tags. So let me, let me show you what this looks like um, in the logs. So if we come back here and look at a most recent interaction. Uh, it's probably pretty close. You can see that I am not logging anything yet uh, because I hadn't put this stuff in. But what I would normally have, if we go look at a different, um, a different thing, let's look at like Alexa Dev Tips, which is the the skill that I'm actually working on. Is it though? No, it's not that one. It's the it's this gross one. This one. Okay, so in here, these are things that I was doing yesterday. What you can see is on the way out, uh, come on. I just want to show what one of these looks like. Is that such a big deal? This is what the response builder looks like on the way out. So this is for my stop intent. Um, let's see if we can find something that's a little more complex. I can find this if I show you the Star Wars one. I just I, I do this all over the place, so it's um it's a useful practice that I get into all the time. But on my on my way out, this is my response builder. So this is a goodbye, right? So this is just as output speech, that's all we send. But if we look at something more complex, this is my SSML output, right? So this is where I'm sending an image uh, and putting all this stuff on the screen in SSML, and then I'm sorry, in APL. Um, and then if we get further down here, we can see my data sources. Uh, and then finally, we have output speech and reprompt. And these are the things that I'm really interested in. Uh, because I say, like, you asked me about Darth Vader. And then I tell them about Darth Vader. And then I also have a reprompt, which is like, what else do you want to know? So these are values that live in this object, this response builder object. And all that I'm doing in my code is, well, let's get into the one I'm actually working on. Um, all I'm doing in here is taking out that output speech.ssml and setting it as a session attribute. And I'm also ripping out the speak tags because I don't want to duplicate those. So I am replacing those values. And then I do the same thing with the output speech for the reprompt. If it exists, then I go ahead and I um, set it as the previous reprompt. Now what's cool about this, by saving those two values, it doesn't matter what I do in my skill or what path I take or whatever, but on my way out, on the way to sending things back to Alexa, I catch it with my response log and um, save those as session variables and then they're, pers they're persisted on the way out. The reason this is useful is because when, it, when the user says the next thing, if they say repeat, I can do that. And my repeat intent just takes those session variables, previous speak and previous reprompt, um, and says them back to the user again. So this means that anytime the user says, I'm sorry, what, or repeat, or whatever, um, I'm always going to be confident that I'm going to say the thing that I said the last time back to the user with the same reprompt, with the same everything. 
um, you can see that I'm also not setting an action. I don't want to know that they were in the repeat intent. I want to make sure that we know exactly what they were trying to do. So maybe if they keep saying repeat or we hit this a couple times in a row, I could log that or keep track of it in some way and then um, say, oh, maybe maybe they want help. They keep trying to hear it over and over, but they're not getting it right. Maybe we could uh, give them some kind of help or insight or whatever. So that is by adding that little bit of functionality into my response log, uh, which is, I don't know where it went. Let's just look at the file. Um, by, by adding this little function, this put repeat data in my response log, this means that every time that something happens in my skill, I don't care what it is, um, I can store that in session and then retrieve it later um, if I need to repeat what the user said or something like that. So um, this has become super valuable in being able to make my skill more accessible to users. I wish that this was something that was built right in, um, but it is not It is not built right in. So you need to build this yourself uh, and just hook it up to the Amazon dot, um, repeat intent. Okay, so we have, we have a working template. I suppose I should confirm that. If I say opens, no, I, I gotta, I made some changes too. So let's save this. Let's quit this. Let's do a deploy. Um, I, I think that repeat is a, a big thing that a lot of people are distracted or their kids are talking or whatever. And so it's nice to be able to give them that opportunity to hear it again every single time. Uh, and unfortunately, we have to build that ourselves. So that is the way that I have constructed that. Uh, all right, so as we wait for that to deploy, the last step that I want to do is make this a GitHub repository, which will be pretty easy to do. Um, I don't I don't know that I'm done. Am I? I don't even think that I'm close to done. Let's take a look. Cancel. I have stop. I have help. I have repeat. Uh, launch request. Intent reflector and error. I've done all of those. So this is this is about, about pretty much my core template. So I think what we can do um, is we'll just kick this into GitHub and then I'm gonna try and do an ask new. Maybe it'll just work. I don't know, I haven't actually seen how that goes down. So we'll, we'll find out here in a minute. So code is still deploying. And in just a moment, there we go. So I should make sure it's working. So let's do an ask dialogue just to make sure but I haven't broken anything. Open skill template. Jeff, there was an error. What should we do now? What, what error? What are you talking about? I don't write errors. Have you guys ever seen an error happen on this screen? Never. Um, let's go take a look at what could be going on. So this is Alexa skill template. 11.43. God, I hate this new interface so much. Helper is not defined in index.js. Oh, that's an easy fix. I just hadn't included. But I have. I have defined it. What do you mean that I haven't included helper? Wait, I'm in the wrong, wrong editor. That's why. Const helper equals. All right, that's an easy fix. So uh, we're getting close on time, 11.45, goodness. Uh, and I have a meeting at 12.30 and I have another one at one and another one at two with Clark. Stacked up day. Lots of streaming though, I like the streaming part. I'm very excited. If I didn't mention to you guys, I'm very excited that I got accepted to the uh, the Live Coders Conference, 
which is a bunch of the people that write code here live on um, Twitch. There's a collection of about 150 of us at this point that are all part of a team. And we're putting a live free concert on, not concert, um, conference on uh, in, later in June. And I will be one of the speakers at that. I guess they did one in April and they had 750,000 unique people. Um, just absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I, I'm very excited to see what that could do for our our follower count and regulars and stuff like that. It, it, the, the world could change after that. We'll see. Um, all right, so we have deployed. Let's do one more dialogue just to see if our skill is working. Open skill template. Please work. Nice. Help. Um, repeat. I had the repeat thing in here. Oh, I didn't. I didn't add it. Okay, that's fine. So, um, the thing I was interviewed for just that um, it was all about working from home. Are you talking about that YouTube video trade last that I was a part of? Uh, it wasn't so much an interview either. They they sent me a list of questions and I just recorded um, a video that talked about what it's like to work from home and lessons learned and best practices and stuff like that. Um, but it was just a guy that was uh, putting a video together. It was a lot of fun actually um, to participate. But um, yeah, that's okay. So I think our template's good. So let's let's jump into here. And I don't really wanna, what did I change in these? That's right. That's not the one we're working in anyway. We want to do add, create new repository. We want to call this Alexa skill template. If I could type, it's important I get that one right. Uh, yeah, create repository. Wonderful. Uh, I've got my initial commit. We'll publish our repository. Uh, no, this isn't from VS Code. This is just the the um, Git desktop, yeah. Keep this code private? Heck no. Publish. Okay, so my hope in all of this is that I should be able now to come to my GitHub and see repositories. I see an 89th repository, because why not have more of those? And in here, I need to figure out how to refer. I wonder if I can just do this. So the, the, the whole path, the whole point of what we were doing today, um, let's do this, get out of that, and We're in our directory. Um, all files not needed. Yeah, I probably should. Um, I haven't done it yet. I, I have just a few minutes left, Gold Zulu, though. I'll have to go back and uh, tweak that up. But I want to see if I can do ask new. It's interesting that they don't even give you that option. So let's go look at the documentation. Ask do template URL. It's template URL. Okay. So I want to do ask new template URL. Oh my gosh. Do you think this will work? I've just basically pointed at my GitHub repo. Shut up. We only support .git URL for user's custom template. Well, how do I point to my .git file? Does anyone know the answer to that?
but I don't want to refer to it locally. Like the whole point of this thing is to be able to say, I mean, look at this. They even provide a URL right here, right? I, I want to do this. Uh, I didn't see, I didn't see it. Like it's not a file here. I see, okay. So let's try that again. Ask new template URL that. AWS Lambda unofficial template. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wanna do that, please. Type my skill name, delete me. Delete this test. Delete this test. See, so I have to have a specific branch I don't want to do that. And they give you no documentation on how to set any of these up. This stuff makes me so mad. So I have to have a branch called Ask CLI X. Why would that matter? I mean, I could just create another branch, I guess. I mean, they're, they're very much running a command that is git clone branch ask CLI ask. It, it feels like they're expecting that. Undefined itch, thank you for being here. I hope you get that itch defined. Um, it is not, it's not a, a Alexa hosted skill. This is a standard um, AWS Lambda hosted skill, not, not an Alexa hosted one. It's custom Lambda AWS. Um, you can see yeah, I chose the, this choice here, AWS Lambda. Um, if I have to create a branch, I will but I don't want to. I'm waiting for Jeff Nunn to get back to me. I just updated the CLI this morning. They had a new minor version. Oh, are you chiming me? Yeah, I can flip the camera. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then we'll go back to this. So, um, is it a is it a bug? Is it a? I mean, if I just have to create another branch and push it all up there again, I will. That just seems dumb. Who wouldn't just build a standalone template? Why would I have just a branch of a project that is the template? That feels odd to me. as we anxiously wait for Jeff Nunn to give us an answer to this question, I feel like the step I would have taken. Oh, I just have a new parameter. Oh, okay, so let's see, did it actually create anything? Delete. No, it hadn't even created anything. Okay, cool, so we can just do template URL, 
and then template branch. That's absolutely a bug. That should be that should be an easy fix. Template branch master. Now I got to go through all those steps again, which is fine. AWS Lambda. Yes, I'd like to use the skill template. Skill name. Delete this test. Shut up. Oh my God, that's amazing. Holy cow. Okay, so we just figured it out um, with a little bit of help from Jeff Nunn, but um, I don't know why they're looking for that Ask CLI X. Um, so we just had to add an additional parameter, but we basically have a working starter template now that we can use every time we build a new skill. That's amazing. Uh, because now as I reinvent or change or whatever, um, I can just make those changes here and then it becomes the way that I build skills going forward. So thank you, Jeff Nunn, for finding that answer. And uh, this is available on my GitHub if you guys want to grab this. I'm going to star it. You're welcome to star it. Um, if you have ideas, again, this is, this is only meant to be a starter template. So don't add functionality that not every single skill might need at the beginning. But... I feel like there's there's much more that I want to add to this, like tests and uh, lots and lots of things like that. So, uh, well, you know what? This is this is a new thing for me. We just got to the point. I started this session saying we're going to do this, and the goal was talk about the architecture, create a new skill, copy the new architecture into the new one that is a starter template get it on GitHub and create a new skill from it. And in two hours, we did that. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of all of us. This was pretty cool, everybody. Um, I'm gonna put a bow on this for today. We are steadily, steadily creeping towards that 500 goal. I actually haven't looked at it in a while. I just keep seeing new followers show up uh, every once in a while. But if we take a look, I'm nervous to get to that 500. We are at something, 358. Um, I, we add a couple people every day. So I, I feel good about our progress. Um, but voice and robotics is going to be happening over at Amazon Alexa in three minutes. Man, you guys should go tune in. I, uh, I can't rate a channel that's not broadcasting right now, and they're not broadcasting yet. But head on over. Check out Jeff Nunn for voice and robotics at... at uh, in two minutes and uh, and then head over to unspecified software at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, where I will be back over there and Clark's gonna tell me all the other things that I did wrong so thank you guys all for tuning in it is always a pleasure uh, our viewership continues to grow which I think is super exciting um, and uh, tell your friends man I'd love to have uh, I'd love to have some more folks join us here and share their thoughts and ideas uh, we only get better by uh, by doing all of this so Thank you guys all. We'll see you soon. Take care.